mentioned that Al Ansar, and uh, I, th I think it's very important to, to, when you listen to any of the speakers today, by the way, just listen to one or two points. You don't have to try to memorize everything, but try to remember, remember one or two points, put them in your phone or write them down, and try to, let's try to implement that in our lives. Bada Allah, if you go, I just have a little hey. The Lord of honor and power. Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has adorned every aspect of men by granting him good stature and good proportions and safeguarding him from increase and decline. The peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many, many, many salutations be upon his trustworthy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, his family and his ummah. And to all your bright faces that you have gathered here in this beautiful occasion. May peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. First and foremost, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessed day. For this blessed day of gathering, and indeed it is an honor to be standing here today to be part of third annual Sinatul Nabi conference organized by our brothers and sisters in North American Muslim Foundation. I also like to thank my brothers and sisters who have worked tirelessly to make this event possible. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of them immensely for their efforts. Respected ulama, respected elders, respected guests, respected speakers, and my dear brothers and sisters in gangsters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again. In this blessed occasion, an important occasion, which we are all gathered to learn about the importance of this auspicious day and also to learn the importance of the teaching of the most important men in humanity Muhammad the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I'd like to start my talk by quoting a verse from chapter 8 of the glorious Quran which stresses the importance of unity between Muslim ummah بَعْدِ عَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا وتتحبر يحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصادرين صدق الله العظيم سورة الأنفال آية نمبر 46 الله سبحانه وتعالى says and obey Allah and His Messenger and do not dispute with one another lest you lose courage and your strength departs and be patient, surely Allah is with those who are as sabirin Muslims are facing the greatest challenge of their times where justice is denied for them. Muslims are forced and deprived of their rights by being attacked in social media. Muslims are made to feel there is an organized effort made by the West to oppress them and degrade them. Derogatory words are used to describe Muslims in Islam, yet it is Muslim from across the globe shows their tolerance to the West 
by exercising patience because we are peace-loving people. It is saddening that Islam is now afflicted with those enemies who invented so many lies and attributes to Islam and this age terrorism, aggression, oppression, vandalism and wrongly and mischievously attributed to Islam while Islam with its pure teachings, noble laws and mercifully perfected in Jannah. Let us remember him and send many, many salutations upon him to the most complete human being, the undisputed face of glad tidings, the undisputed champion of success and happiness. May peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him. In this blessed occasion, I like to point to a very important matter that needs immediate attention. And also to convey the clear message of the man we trusted the most, the legacy that he left behind for his own man. If you pay closer attention to the current situation of Muslims in the West, two lands are very common among Muslims. The first one is the negative projection of Muslims in the Western media. And the second one is the lack of unity among ourselves. The first level is out of reach, but Muslims can change the state of their disunity, the state of ideological ikhtilaf following the respective schools of thoughts. The question is, how did Muslims end up in the Saudi state? The Saudi state of ikhtilaf and disunity in the first place. The answer is, it is very easy. It's hidden in our history. The seeds of disunity were sown and asked in early state of Islam by those who went against the Prophet Sunnah. If you look at the history, the first fundamental breach was brought and divinely inspired system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soon after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam departed from this world. Many centuries later, we still struggle to keep the unity of this great ummah intact. Over the time, we are so weakened and become so fragile to easily submit to the colonial onslaught. How do we change such a Saudi state that we are in? We need to educate ourselves first and develop better understanding of the cause of our disunity. We have to cure this disease, the disease of ikhtilaf that we have created in the name of madhab and adversity. It needs immediate attention of those own humma at large and we do not, if we do not cure this disease fast enough, the damage would be so severe that the recovery would be impossible. The forum has become a battleground among different schools of thoughts. And this is a fact. We are calling each other Muqtadi in elevators. One group is calling another group ignorance because simply they differ from one another in opinion. Muslims are attacking Muslims using the forum, using the media, and the name of Madhab and the name of Tariqah. We have to understand that different people around the world following different schools of thoughts. They differ in opinion from one another. Bear in mind, no scholar of Islam passed in opinion without evidence. Be aware that extreme differing it will bring sex to the religion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden the act of bringing sex into the religion. It is inevitable for Muslims to get the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam across to the rest of the Muslim world. If we reflect upon the verses of the glorious Quran or the Ahadith of Prophet وسلم, the way we should, we will find that a small ayah, a small hadith contains so much benefit, so much information 
that volumes can be written about it and a world can be reformed with it with a small, with a small little talk with a small little word this is the case with a particular hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which is narrated by Ribad bin Sariya it's recorded in Sunan Abu Dawood in Jami Tirmidhi Ibn Abu Dawood narrates he says that verily the Prophet peace be upon him delivered the sermon which caused our hearts to tremble and our ears and our eyes to cry. He agreed to their request and summarized for them what they needed to know. And this is the legacy of the most trusted men on earth for his ummah. He said, my legacy to you is that I advise you to have taqwa of Azza wa Jalla. He said, and he said, for those of you who live long after me will see great disagreements, which means among my ummah. Then if you feel an ikhtilaf, you must follow my sunnah. He said, predicted about the disease of ikhtilaf that would appear shortly after his death and would continue until the day of judgment. He predicted it because Allah Azza wa Jal told him. Shortly after his death, in the middle of the Khilafat of Uthman radiallahu an, the first splinter group, the Khawarij broke away from the Ummah. And then, in the time of Ali radiallahu an, Rifada broke away. And so on and so forth, it continued till date. The Muslims kept on breaking away from Ummah to the point that now we have so many groups, so many methodologies, and so many movements, so many ways of understanding of Islam that we cannot even count them. Prophet warned us of the disease that would affect all of us, the disease of ikhtilaf and the disease of disunity. Prophet put this as an obligation to all of us. He said, so I command you. This is an obligation upon you that if you feel an ikhtilaf, turn back to my sunnah, come back to me. Let us go back to the history for a little bit and the time of Sahaba Ali Allah Ta'ala And see the conquest of the world. Unity was the base of their success. Bunch of Bedouins as a pioneers took one message and changed the world with it. And they built bridges of faith and brotherhood amongst Arab in Ajab. But they stayed united. Despite having differences of opinion among themselves. Imam Mufti, a companion of Imam Shafi Rahmatullah he met. And that is the use of day today. We can see it. There are many verses of the glorious Quran that stresses the importance of unity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shura, ayah number 13, an aqeemu al-dinna wa la tatafarraku. To establish the religion and do not be divided therein. Allah azza wa jal says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ and if your Lord had so willed, He could surely have made bin Kaiman Ummah. It was easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us Muslims, to make us Chinese origin, to make us a Buddhist. It was easy for Him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min takarim wa muntha, wa ja'alnakum shuhubam wa qabailah bita'arafu. Inna akramakum inna Allah yaqaqum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us in tribes so we can recognize each other. Dear brothers and sisters, 
This kind of ikhtilaf must cease in order to keep the unity of Muslims ummah, Muslim ummah intact. Otherwise this ummah will be destroyed in the name of tariqah, in the name of madhab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَأَقِمْ وَجْحَكَ لِلْدِينِ حَنِيثًا So set your faces towards the religion of Hanif. Now that as Shafi, not as Hanafi, not as Hanbali, not as Maliki. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, putting the importance on us to stand before him as Hanif. Difference of opinion should be learned and learning experience by speaking ignorantly and calling each other names only creates fitna among us. Remember that no Muslim scholar would differ from one another in opinion without following evidence. Our aim is the same, our principles are the same, then why this anger, why this enmity towards each other, why this question should be asked. The truth is we do not just decide the matter of what is innovation. We cannot do as ordinary people, we just cannot decide that. Because the verdict of the shaykh or that means said so. The scale upon which we weigh the matter in Islam is the kitab in sunnah. If this was not the case, if kitab in sunnah was not the base of unity, among Muslims, among giving a verdict, then in every issue in which there was a difference between scholars and fiqh, we would say that all of those who differ in opinions are innovators. Is Imam Shadi Rahmatullah or Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah when they differ in opinion from each other, are they innovators? Are they are the one who committed a bid'ah? The wudu bid'ah? I say the obligation of the general public of the Muslim community is to follow those scholars who are known to be abandoned in knowledge. Be aware of the vision. My brothers and sisters, mark my words. Be aware of the vision. And I say the vision, not the farin. Be aware of the vision. And I said, sorry, be aware of division and not define because there is no escape from define. Because people have disagreed in understanding of knowledge from the time of Prophet وسلم, and the only thing is required from all of us, all of us, to guard ourselves against define of hearts and not to be abandoning each other in the name of Madhab and the name of Tariqah. I also suggest that we should know the difference between advising and condemning. Using a good logic of explanation is also very important among us. Brothers and sisters, look at each, each difference of opinion as a learning opportunity. And stop thinking that you have to force your view, your ideas, your thoughts on others as though this is love. Understand that many people means well, but they are simply using the logic, bad logic and need to be lovingly shown to the right path. And the end, I request leaders of our community to raise awareness to motivate our youth to be involved in the community. They should be provided with opportunities. Our youths are running away from knowledge of deen. They are becoming distant with the divine message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the biggest reason behind that is the passive attitude of our leadership and the community. It is our responsibility it is the, the responsibility of our leaders in the community towards our youth to give them the sense of urgency to come back to the deen, to see Islam as a solution. And most of the problems among our youth is because we are reluctant to talk about the political and social and spiritual realities that are happening around us. 
This opportunity should be provided for them so they become activists among the members of the community. In the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to act upon the legacy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the deep lift of Allah ta'ala ala khayr khalqi ya shafil anbiya'i wa musayin sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as-salamu alayhi wa sallam